Hello and welcome to Aviation No Tie Downs. This is where we bring you interesting stories of our shared passions for the people, the business, and the adventure of aviation. I'm here today with my friend Hank Canterbury. Good to see you again, Hank. Well, well good to see you, Thank Teresa. you for having me. Yeah, welcome to Litchfield Park, Arizona. <laughs> thank you. Well, Hank t was generous enough to take me flying in this beautiful Pitts aircraft of his a couple of weeks ago. It was um, absolutely spectacular, um, all the maneuvers, and, uh, and obviously you've trained a lot of people how to do some of those maneuvers through the years. Well, you know, it's such a delightful airplane to fly. And being a fighter pilot, I couldn't afford the gas to go on a jet. So I said, well, I might as well get something like this that I can afford. Well, we had a, a ton of fun, and I would say maybe my favorite maneuver was the Immelman. That's a half loop with a half roll at the top. Yeah, that was that was. As a lot I of recall, fun. you did that pretty well. Well, you're and very that's, that is a, a difficult maneuver for many people that start out in aerobatics because you start out fast and you get up here on top upside down and you're slow, mm -hmm. and you have to roll the airplane very carefully, uh, and it can kind of stall on you, and a lot of people do some funny things out of the top of Elmwood's. So that was a great time. Well, we originally got to know each other at the uh, through an organization called the BPT. Bonanza Pilot Training Program. Yes, exactly, and of which you're an instructor out there. I've been an instructor in, in an organization associated with all that, the Bonanza and Baron training for about 30 years now. Mm -hmm. And we kind of consider ourselves to be the Beechcraft experts because among the 30 instructors or so, most of us either own or have owned one of the Beechcraft aircraft. Mm -hmm. And in my case, I've owned my airplane for uh, 36 years. Yeah, well, it's a great organization. Lightspeed has had some affiliation with it through the years and done some sponsorships there. And I've had a chance to be out there when you guys are doing some of those clinics. You and, sure uh, have, and that's how we met. And, uh, Lifespeed has been very generous as part of our sponsorship in helping us uh, get along and giving out a Lightspeed headset, which was a very popular event. Well, it wasn't until um, I had known you actually for quite a while that I realized that you had a, a quite a distinguished Air Force career as well. And well, I, I guess you could call it distinguished, but I spent 30 years trying to learn how to do it. <laughs> well, and, and teaching others to do it as well. But did some of that too. Yeah. I, I started back some time ago. I, do we have to say how far back it was? Well, I think it's all on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, but anyways, but you were among the first class in of the Air Force Academy. That's, I guess, where it started, huh? Yes, in 1955, I went from being a high school punk in Huntsville, Alabama, to being able to join the first class at the Air Force Academy. And from there, went to Air Force pilot training and was fortunate enough to become a fighter pilot, which is what I wanted to do for years and years, and uh, flew just about every tactical fighter from the F-100 through the F-16. And so along the way, um, you were in during the years of Vietnam. I was, and the first time um, I went to Vietnam was 1967, and we flew. Uh, I flew about 286 missions in the first year I was over there. And then you had one situation where um, I think where you ended up having to ditch the aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> well, I jettisoned the airplane. <laughs> A better way of putting it then. <laughs> Sometimes known as ejection. <laughs> it was in the F-100, which I had been flying prior to, to my previous assignment prior to that. So the two of us went out and to get under the weather, we had to go out over the South China Sea a little bit, came back in about 2,500 feet going under the undercast. Mm -hmm. Well, my engine just decided it, it had enough, and so it just mm. quit. Mm. Well, here I am heavily loaded with bombs and what have you and, and low to the ground. And so I said, whoa, this isn't going to work. So I turned about 90 degrees and jettisoned all the stores, the bombs, off and the fuel tanks from underneath the wing. And then the airplane was sinking. And I thought, well, I'll do something here. There's some procedures I could follow maybe to get it to run again, none of which worked, I might add. And so I did another turn to kind of get back out of the water if I could. And I looked up, and I realized then how low I was. Mm -hmm. So I said, it's time to jettison this airplane. So I reached down and blew the canopy and jettisoned the airplane. And I came out, did a back somersault, parachute open, and I hit the water. Wow. Just like that. Wow. So uh, I was fortunate that I at least got out in the water, which gives me a little bit of protection from anybody that would come out after me, which they did. But I had some support overhead yes. that we kind of scared them off. And I had my trusty 38 pistol that I, you know, <laughs> right. I showed it to them. Mm -hmm. Don't come any closer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know whether that had any, any, any effect on it or not, but anyway. Probably, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> so I got picked up finally after about an hour in the water, waiting wow. on the 
things and made story. it out. So that was uh, that was kind of an exciting time. Yeah, what a terrifying moment. But it sounds like you were able to just fall back on your training and yep. yeah. Air Force trains you very well in that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, well. and that's awesome to hear. Yeah. yeah. I was looking at a picture the other day uh, of, a, of guys in the squadron over there in Germany when we were flying F-100s, and I counted two Medal of Honor winners, mm. three general officers, and one near astronaut that came out of that small group of 18 pilots Wow! out of that squadron. Amazing. Now, they made the Medal of Honor, the two people made the Medal of Honor in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I've had the privilege in my Air Force career throughout to, to meet some very courageous, patriotic people. Yeah. And uh, that's, it started with that squadron. Yeah. And I came back to the States three years later and for a short time and then got selected for the Thunderbirds. This happened to be my team right here, and that's me of the black tail. Right. And how'd you know? that tail get black? I thought it came from the factory like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't, <clears throat> really. The, I, I flew in such a position as a slot pilot right behind the leader, mm -hmm. and I was back here as number four, and my tail was sticking up in his exhaust. Mm -hmm. And so the blackness on that tail is not paint, it's mm -hmm. soot right. from the leader's jet. Mm -hmm. How did you get selected for the Thunderbirds? Well, you volunteer for it. Mm -hmm. And we'd actually travel with the team, and we'd be interviewed and see how you handled yourself in various situations. And um, then you would fly with the team, uh, and a training sortie to see how well you could really fly. Of course, you had a bunch of recommendations from your squadron mates and your squadron commanders at the time. Well, fortunately, I, I made the team, and I was the first Air Force Academy graduate to be on the team. Well, from the Thunderbirds then, I uh, managed to go through the Fighter Weapons School, which was the top gun school, Air Force, and then I went from there to Vietnam the first time, which we discussed. Uh, and coming back from Vietnam, where I'd flown those 276 missions, uh, with the 31st Tech Fighter Wing right here. But I then became the wing commander of the 56th Tactical Fighter Wing, which was stationed in Tampa, Florida. Well, yes. guess what? I left that and went to other jobs and came out here as the commander at Luke Air Force Base. Right. Well, a few years later, they moved the 56th Wing and all these squadrons out here as well as the squadron that I was in back in Homestead. They all just followed all you out to Arizona. Here, you know, yes. They're all out here now at, at Luke. <laughs> That's cool. Well, the interesting part about Luke is that my son is now the commander <laughs> at Luke Air Force Base. That is just so amazing. Yeah, yes. my son Todd. Yes, right. He also had done some other parallel things with me. Yes. He was on the Thunderbirds. Yeah, crazy. It's rather, rather unique because I think we're the only father and son that have ever been on a... Um, public demonstration team of any sort. And that's my son and his F-16s, and here I am and the F-100 over and there. And there's an incredible resemblance <laughs> there between the two of you. I don't know whether you happen to see the president who came out here to visit a couple of weeks ago. I remember that, yeah. He came to Luke, right? He came with three yeah. days notice. He and a whole entourage and officials from Pentagon and Washington came out here. Mm -hmm. And the president turns to my son and he said, I understand that your father was here. And he said, well, yes, sir. As a matter of fact, that's his picture right there. Mm -hmm. And the president turns around and looks at that and says, hmm. So then they were later on had a, uh, a press conference and the president asked Todd the same question on TV. Mm -hmm. Todd said, yes, sir, that was my father. You saw his picture. And he said, yeah, you all look like twins. <laughs> so from here on out, I told my son that I'm going to be known not as your father, but as your twin. So when you retired, in addition to doing general aviation flying, which we talked about, um, you still like to do the aerobatics. Yes, I do. I guess being a fighter pilot, it's, it's kind of in your blood, and right. being a Thunderbird too, where we did aerobatics in formation. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, I was able to buy a Pitts, mm -hmm. which is a fact, the one I have now is factory built. Mm -hmm. And it's a two-place airplane, which is good because I can train people in it, and I could also take people for rides like you got. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also compete in some of the local aerobatic competitions over the, over the time. And mm -hmm. here's my I Love Me competition wall <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, so. Right. So you, even to this day, you're still doing I, aerobatic I, competitions. Yes, I do. I, yeah, I, I, I do it right. I fly my pits about three or four times a week. It's fantastic. Because yeah. it's, it's just such a delight to fly, and I like it. Yeah. So when someone um, calls you and says, hey, I'd like to take some aerobatic training, um, what, are, what are some of the questions you ask them? 
Well, I'd say, have you ever done it before? And uh, because uh, aerobatic training, as opposed to just flying in the usual civilian airplanes, demands a lot more of a person, a pilot, and they, they become better pilots when they take some aerobatic training of any sort. Their perception of small changes and, and things, that uh, handling the control, attitude changes, it, it increases. Mm -hmm. Uh, they learn that the airplane can fly upside down as well as right side up and, uh, and that how to do it safely mm -hmm. in the proper airplane. And it just, as a general rule, will enhance as a pilot's skill and awareness level. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend uh, anybody that, that has the least bit of interest in getting to be a better pilot, more skillful, uh, and a greater, deeper understanding of how airplanes fly and, and mm -hmm. how to fly them more safely, mm -hmm. uh, to take an aerobatic course of some sort. So we're going to go take a look at your Bonanza now. And I see you've got the number four on there still. Well, uh, I had to have something to remind me of where I belonged in the formation. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so right. that's what it was. So can you think of a, a memorable person or a story that um, from all of the folks that you've met through the years that was particularly meaningful? I think just about everybody in the aviation world knows Bob Hoover. Mm, yes. Time frame was 1955. Uh, I had just entered the academy and we had finished up our uh, eight weeks of summer training to become in the military. Mm -hmm. We're out there and ha having been in the field and having had eight weeks of pretty intense training, Bob comes out and he selects one of the airplanes and he puts on this absolutely stunning air show for us out there in sunlight about like this. What a treat. And he pulls up in this F-86 kind of like this and we're all kind of gathered out here in front of him and sat down to listen to him tell tales. Right. So, he, he gets out of that airplane <laughs> and he sits on the wing of that F-86, dangles his feet like this. Oh my and here God. we are out here talking. Mm. And he tells us stories about his flying experiences as a test pilot, some of the things he just demonstrated doing, and we're all here in awe. Oh. And he's just sitting there for about an hour and a half talking to us like that. Uh. So that's how I met Bob Hoover. Welcome to the 56. Thank you. Here's uh, when I was the 82nd Air Division Commander. Right. This fellow here went on to be the Chief of Staff of the Air Force. And there's that young guy. I don't know who he is. <laughs> but this is uh, the F-100 that I flew. And this was the airplane that was when I first learned to fly fighters. This is the first one here. Is that the one you have the most hours in then? Mm, yeah, I guess I do. I have about 1,700 hours in, in, that. in yeah. the F-100. Uh, How many total hours? Ooh, I got 5,000 hours of military jet fighter training okay. and flying mm -hmm. in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And when I retired, I had 5,000 hours. Mm -hmm. I was a civilian pilot, as I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And sim since that time, I've flown another almost 15,000 hours. Wow. All civilian training, Bonanzas, Barons, various other airplanes, pits. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was training, instructing. Mm -hmm. But I'm approaching 20,000 hours, and I've never been an airline pilot. That's amazing. These airplanes, when I got here, were scattered all over the base, different places. And I said, you know, it would be nice if we kind of consolidated these things. People could appreciate it better. This is the T-6, which was a pilot training aircraft. And back in the 1942, we had a lot of those on different fields around here. Then here was, this wasn't the absolute first airplane the Thunderbirds flew, but it was the second one. That's the F-84F right there. They flew the original ones for a few months. It didn't have the swept wings like this airplane does. Mm -hmm. Now this is the F-15, and it was a training aircraft here at Luke, and in the, this was the first place that when the F-15 came out in mid-70s, 76 I believe it was, this was uh, the training location for the F-15. So you've got some hours in the F-4 here, too. I've got about 800 hours in F-4s. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I started flying this airplane in uh, 1969. Mm -hmm. What you do see in black letters up there under the canopy, it has my name. Yes. Uh, I was a lieutenant colonel when I was uh, in charge of that squadron. But in that first mission that I told you about when I went, took the squad, 308 squadron back to Vietnam, yes. we went to Yubon, Thailand. And Yubon, Thailand was where the other F-4s were, squadrons. And I'll never forget that night that the deputy for operations, the same job that Renbarger has here, mm -hmm. he called all the squadron commanders in and he said, we're going back to war. We're going to go for 10 days 
10 nights, and he said, if you get shot down, don't even come up on the radio. We're not even going to look for you for 10 days and 10 nights. Uh, but we're going to bomb, and, and we did. And that's what was so effective and so powerful that it convinced the North Vietnamese to, to get back to the bargaining table. Mm -hmm. We went in there that morning, and I thought, well, I don't believe I'm coming home. My son was two years old, and they, and they were back at Homestead. So at 3 o'clock in the morning before I went to the briefing, I wrote my wife a letter and said, take care of the kid. Fighter pilots paid a dear price in Vietnam, particularly up north. And many of my friends were killed or were, became POWs. And I had the opportunity to associate with, to fly with, and to do missions with and serve our nation in some of the absolutely most courageous patriots. Well, even just as we've been here today, it's so refreshing and encouraging just to meet the, the young people who are serving today, right? The uh, pilots that come here, that. Todd trains and has trained for several iterations of his command, they're superb. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. just superb. I have the opportunity here to introduce my son, Todd, who is now the, the wing commander of the 56th Fighter Wing, which I've told you a little bit about the history. Todd, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank it, you for joining us today. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yes, you're welcome. And thank you for letting us be a guest on your base here today. We've had a, a fantastic time learning from your dad some of the history of the base and the aircraft. And we've had the incredible joy of listening to the F-35s as they're taking off. And it's an honor to lead the men and women of Luke Air Force Base. Oh. Our mission is simple. We train the world's greatest fighter pilots and combat ready airmen. Fantastic. Well, well said. Thank you, said, thank you so much. much. So when someone asks you, how much longer are you going to keep flying? What do you like to say? <laughs> well, you know, I was at a birthday party, an 80th birthday party for a friend of mine who used to work for me uh, up in Omaha here a couple of months ago. And we're sitting around the next morning at breakfast. And sure enough, this guy's wife asked me, he says, Hank, how long are you going to fly until you die? And I took a deep breath and quipped and I said, well, I hope so, but I just hope they don't occur on the same day. <laughs> right. That's fantastic. Thank you for watching this episode of Aviation No Tie Downs. Now, let's go flying.